Hi everybody, I, I'm currently under attack from uh, one or two individuals who are attempting to gain access to my name, address, and phone number through claiming my videos are infringing on their copyright. They've posted three claims against three of my videos. LPS 2, The Rights of the Child, Fempocalypse, and LPS Part 1, Men Have an Equal Responsibility. Their claim is that I am infringing on their original works, Femdompocalypse, The Rights of a Child Part 2, and Men Have an Equal Responsibility, which they claim are their original works. Googling of these titles receives no relevant hits. As you can see in the screenshot, to file a counterclaim, I must make personal information, including legal name, address, and phone number available to the claimant. There is no unoriginal material in these videos. Anyone who has watched any of these three videos will know that I am sitting at my kitchen table reading from a script I've written. These are my original works, with no content from other copyrighted works in them. I own the copyright to these videos. The system is now automated, removal is instant, and counterclaiming requires that I give YouTube permission to disclose my personal information to the individuals who have made a claim against me. This is a disgusting abuse of the system in order to dox me. I know this because there were only two claimants. They don't want to shut down my account. They want me to counterclaim to prevent a third strike and deletion so that they can get my personal information and begin a campaign of real-life harassment. This attack occurred only a day or two after the first highly upvoted, over a hundred upvotes, comment I left on the channel of Free From Thought blogger and popular atheist turned feminist Zom Gitz Chris. According to the people in the skeptic atheist community, there have been incidents of stalking and harassment of individuals in that community who do not toe the FTB feminist party line. Hi everybody, I'm Girl Writes What, and uh, I've been writing a very great deal on um, something that has been referred to as financial abortion. Um, I'm going to refer to it in a more value-neutral way in this series of videos, um, simply because uh, the word abortion kind of makes a lot of people squirm, even people like me, who are essentially pro-choice. And, uh, and really, uh, because a lot of the time um, opponents seem to intentionally want to misconstrue it as uh, a man's right to force a woman to have an abortion, and uh, that's just absolute nonsense. Um, it's it's absurd, and it's it's totally not what any of this is about. So I'm going to call it um, from this point on a legal paternal surrender, um, similar to what a woman can do uh, with a newborn baby uh, by dropping it off at a safe haven. Just uh, an ability to walk away from. Uh, any rights or obligations to a child uh, that carries your DNA. Now, uh, whenever I discuss this, uh, I, I seem to come across a lot of um, a lot of comments like, uh, "Men have an equal responsibility to prevent pregnancy. Uh, it takes two to tango. Uh, if he doesn't want to have a kid, he should keep his dick in his pants. He had his choice when they had sex. Um, just all kinds of nonsense like that. Uh, he needs to man up and be responsible. Um, just absolutely uh, a lot of arguments that uh, never seem to apply when... Uh, discussing women and their ability to abort uh, unwanted pregnancies or in their ability to uh, drop babies off at safe havens, um, to ad adopt them out. Uh, mothers have uh, a variety, women have a variety of options both uh, after conception and after birth uh, to opt out of motherhood. And this is really what it comes down to. Um, nobody can force a woman to become a mother. Uh, it's, it's just not something that anybody can force a woman to do. She has to choose that. 
And therefore, I just find it extremely, extremely distasteful that we as a society are willing to force the obligations of parenthood um, on men, uh, especially when they have just the most minimal, uh, next to no reproductive rights at all, um, that we, we hold somebody to this kind of obligation uh, for 18 to 21 years based on the fact that he had sex. And I think since there are so many reasons, so many arguments against it uh, that, that don't seem to hold water and, and just so much to talk about that I think I'm going to tackle them one at a time. And the first fallacious argument I really want to tackle is that men have an equal responsibility to prevent pregnancy. <laughs> I, it sounds like an atrocious thing. It sounds unfair. It sounds, it sounds awful. Um, but honestly, there are a couple of reasons that, uh, that it, it really is a fallacy that men have an equal responsibility for birth control for preventing pregnancy. One, it's, it's just illogical. And, uh, and the other is, is that it's just unworkable. Um, I'm allergic to tree nuts. <laughs> All right. So maybe a little off topic, but bear with me. Um, I'm allergic to tree nuts, and uh, if I consume, say, a hazelnut or, or a macadamia nut, uh, I get to go to the hospital and get a few shots of adrenaline and uh, maybe get to stay there a few days in critical condition <laughs> until I recover, hopefully. And, uh, and this, this is my cross to bear. This is, this is the, the risk that I live with every day, and uh, because this risk affects my body, um, I find, I, I feel that it's my responsibility. It is my responsibility to mitigate that risk. The buck stops with me. Um, when I go to a restaurant, uh, a lot of times I just don't end up ordering that piece of cheesecake because I have no way of knowing whether it contains nuts or traces of tree nuts. And, uh, if I ask the waiter and he can't tell me definitively um, yes, the label says that this is a nut-free product, or the label doesn't have any warning that this contains traces of tree nuts or was made on equipment that handles and processes tree nuts. Um, if he can't tell me any of those things, um, then I abstain from cheesecake. <clears throat> Sad but true. And uh, I don't hold him responsible for that. I don't expect that when I go to a restaurant and the waiter offers me dessert, that he's going to say, here are our dessert selections, um, these are the ones that don't contain tree nuts, uh, because this is, this is my issue, not, not his, and uh, I'm the one who's going to have the consequences, not him, um, and I, I don't expect him that when he hands me the dessert menu, he says, he's going to say to me, by the way, are you allergic to anything that could be contained in these desserts? Um, it's really not his responsibility to say that um, to every single customer uh, based on the the potential for one of them being allergic to something that's even really a common allergen. Uh, it's my responsibility because it's my body. See, and that's how that works. It may be my burden and it may be an unfair burden, um, but it's definitely my job to... Uh, to handle and mitigate the risks involved. And if I fail uh, because I'm careless or because I don't bother checking or because I read the ingredients and it says may contain traces and I think, well, what the fuck anyway? I really feel like this chocolate bar right now. Um, if, if I end up getting sick from that, that's my fault. It, it just is. And, uh, and so really, it, it's illogical to say that there is an equal responsibility on men uh, to prevent a state, a physical state, that only affects women. Um, do they have some responsibility to abide by her wishes um, in that regard, by, to abide by the level of risk that she is, the minimum level of risk that she is willing to tolerate? Absolutely. Um, but she really should be the one who determines what level of risk she's willing to, uh, to accept. And she should be the one to ensure that all parties are doing their job, doing their part, uh, mitigating the risks 
um, to her. So that's reason one. Reason one why it's illogical to insist that men have an equal responsibility for birth control. Reason two is uh, that it's, it's just really unworkable. Um, it, it's not doable. It just isn't. Um, number one, women have more and more effective uh, non-permanent options with respect to preventing pregnancy. Um, that they, and they have 100% meaningful power of decision as to what level of risk they're willing to tolerate. And when I say meaningful, I mean informed. Um, a woman is fully capable of ascertaining uh, every time, on a case-by-case -case basis, every time she has sex, uh, whether her partner is responsibly abiding by their mutual decision as to her acceptable level of personal risk. Um, that is, men's only non-permanent birth control option, uh, the condom, is entirely visible to her um, every time he uses it. Uh, she can observe whether he's using it uh, or not, uh, whether he's using it properly or not, if she's paying attention. Um, he can observe that too. Uh, and he, if he's not doing that at any given time, uh, she can refuse to consent to sex based on her absolute and confirmable knowledge uh, of the increased risk uh, to her of pregnancy. Uh, every time they have sex, she's able to insist that he puts the frickin' thing on, uh, that he puts it on properly, and uh, and therefore she can give meaningfully informed consent uh, based on something other than his word. Uh, on the other hand, the most common and most effective forms of birth control for women um, are not visible to the man. Uh, he really has no way of knowing, and arguably no right to know, uh, if she's taking the pill uh, properly or at all, um, if she's lying about it, uh, if she went and had her IUD removed uh, without telling him, uh, you know, only she can know these things. Um, he really has no way to independently, absolutely, confirmably determine uh, whether she's living up to her share of their mutually agreed upon measures to prevent pregnancy. Um, for a man, informed consent amounts to taking a woman at her word and trusting that she's being responsible. Um, he has no real meaningful wherewithal to protect himself from deceit or to mitigate his own risks because he really has no way of ascertaining for sure what those risks are. Um, she does know, uh, however, whether she's been taking her pills on time or at all. Uh, if she's taken antibiotics that interfere with their effectiveness. Um, in fact, she's really the only person who has a right to know these things. Uh, in many cases, she's the only person who can know, um, and, uh, and she does not have to share this knowledge with him. Um, she really doesn't. It is her body, and it's her right to privacy. Um, so if she knows she missed a pill, and she doesn't inform him, uh, or insist he use a condom, then yeah, I think the greater share, perhaps full, responsibility of that pregnancy lies on her. Um, if he refuses to wear a condom, knowing that she's, say, missed three pills in a row, or that she hasn't been taking them properly, or that she's been on antibiotics, um, if, if he refuses to wear a condom, then she's absolutely capable of saying, well, then we're not having sex. Um, she's the one. She's the one who gets to make that call. Um, she's fully informed of and fully in control of the level of risk that she's willing to tolerate. Um, if she agrees to sex without a condom, even though she hasn't taken three pills, um, then she's agreeing to a level of risk that she obviously finds acceptable. And uh, if she lets him proceed without a condom, uh, without informing him she missed three pills, uh, then he's not agreeing to his own acceptable level of risk. Um, because his determination of the risk is based on her failure to inform him of that. Um, for these reasons, uh, the greater wherewithal to prevent pregnancy, because uh, women have more effective uh, and more unilateral options in that regard um, that aren't permanent, 
um, the greater risk, personal risk and burden of the pregnancy itself, um, the ability to demand observable preventive measures on the part of the other person, um, that she can insist he wear a condom and she can observe that he is and is using it properly, um, and the greater ability, therefore, to give meaningful informed consent, I really feel the buck for preventing pregnancy needs to stop with the woman. Um, and frankly, it needs to stop with someone, for crying out loud. Um, a democracy of two simply can't work. It's never been able to work. Somebody has to have the final say. And when it comes to decisions that affect women's bodies, they have to have the final say. And with the final say, with the ultimate authority, has to come ultimate responsibility. Um, she's the only person in this equation who has any meaningful ability to ascertain what the risks are um, and what level of risk she's willing to tolerate and uh, and she has the greater consequences uh, should that risk be improperly or poorly managed. Um, she has all the information, she has 100% say uh, each time they have sex um, and, and in my opinion she has the, the greater share of accountability with respect to an unplanned pregnancy. She just does. And like I said before, it sounds unfair. It really does. Um, but the buck has to stop with someone, and it, it really shouldn't stop with a person who is not the one who gets pregnant. Um, women have this power. Uh, they have this power. Um, and to frame it constantly as a burden... Um, it shouldn't be all her job. Uh, it, it, it's ridiculous. Um, how hard is it to take a pill every day? Um, how hard is it to have an IUD implanted? How hard is it to inform him uh, of the fact that you missed some pills and he needs to wear a condom for the next three weeks? Um, these are not difficult things. These are not huge burdens. Um, and portraying them as gigantic, huge burdens that we place on women is absolutely ridiculous. And the only reason they are framed that way ever um, is because of the burdens of pregnancy. Uh, the burdens of preventing pregnancy are, are actually fairly small. Um, they're, they're very, very easy to work around or, or with or, you know, combine or enforce for a woman. Um, there's just really no excuse. There's no excuse at all. And uh, to, to not say, listen, it's your job. It's your job to manage this. Um, it's not your job to be the one who has to take birth control, but it's your job to determine what birth control measures are going to be used and to make sure that they're used. Um, and, and really, I just can't put it any plainer than that. Uh, women insist on owning their own bodies, but not when it comes to, you know, fully owning their own bodies. This is my body, my choice, my right to consent, my right to give birth, my right to abort, my right to dress how I want, my right to do whatever the fuck I want with my body. Um, but it's, it's not my job to mitigate my own risks. And, and that's just, it just seems like a complete abdication of any sense of personal responsibility on the part of women for what happens to their own bodies. Um, and, and it's all the more egregious when you consider how, um, how many options women have, uh, how easy it is to, uh, to get one of those options and use it, um, how easy it is to just be honest with a man and say, you know, uh, I'm not on the pill, or, you know, I don't quite have it covered, or I don't feel 100% like, uh, like we should have sex without a condom, you know, uh, that, that I want you to do this, I want you to put that on. Um, there's, there's just really no excuse for women being somehow incapable, uh, they're just unable to handle it. Um, if they're allowed to do whatever they want with their own bodies, then then it should be their job to take care of them. And that's just that's just the way it is. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry that 
something has to be your job, but because it's your body, the buck stops with you. Anyhow, that's all I have to say about that particular ridiculous argument, um, that men have an equal responsibility for pre preventing pregnancy. And uh, I suppose in my next video I will tackle one of the other fallacious, ridiculous arguments that uh, people use when they are debating uh, from the position of uh, wanting to hold men responsible for children that they never wanted. So, uh, for now, uh, I'm Girl Writes What, and I'll see y'all later.